is Tom Schneden a malicious prosecutor? Will any justice be done in this case? Is Michael Jackson completely innocent? Is Michael Jackson in a kangaroo court? Michael Jackson fans speak out. Americans fought a revolution, a revolution against big government. Enough. Welcome to On Second Thought, where William Wagner gives you information that ought to give you second thoughts about the unconstitutional acts of our local, state, and federal government. I am Megan Wells. Now, producer and host of On Second Thought, the good guy in the white hat, William Wagner. Introduction, I'm William Wagner, the guy in the good white hat. Asking you if you lost control of your government, is government being abusive? We think so. We're bringing you the third week in a row of a Michael Jackson's fans report about child molestation. And we're going to let you talk to some people, myself included, who are actually witnessing the trial. And you're not hearing on the major networks what's really happening day by day in the trial. We think here on Second Thought is a good place to let you hear from people who are actually in the courtroom and see what's going on. First, I want to introduce Sharon Sydney, you're sitting on my left here. Sharon, you've watched at least, what, 20 days of the trial? Yes, um, much more than 20 days. What of significance happened this week that you were in watching the trial of Michael Jackson in Santa Maria, California? The judge made the ruling to allow the 1108 evidence. <laughs> the hearsay. As you said, the hearsay evidence. And they who predicted the judge it. would? You predicted it. But I, I, I decided to take the judge at his word. So it's not like I was placing a bet or anything, which I don't bet. But, yeah, I mean, I took him at his word. He said if the case wasn't strong enough, he wasn't going to allow it. And everyone knows the case is not strong enough. And he still didn't allow it. He still allowed it. And why did I tell you that would happen? You told me that would happen. I'm not I believe it was Zonin. Mr. Zonin. And um, he said that he was told, if asked, to say those were my notes. <laughs> so he's like, you know, they must have been gotten in there inadvertently when we were meeting and going over. You know, right. Things so that he made a be. Xerox copy yeah. with the prosecutor's notes on what to stress and what to bring out and gave that to the witness. How close do you have to get to coaching the witness before you cross the line and giving him notations on his own grand jury statement to testify at this trial? I looked at that and the prosecutors were not happy that Mesero was bringing this out and Katz was just being honest and saying, yep, those aren't my notations. Yeah. These are my notations, yeah. but some of these aren't my notations. Where did you get them from? Uh, Miss uh, Dr. Katz. Oh, I got him from prosecutor. Yeah. Zonin. Yeah. And Zonin's sitting there, and I could see his hands sort of gripping his chair. <laughs> like, oh, oh, this is not good. You know, caught. I mean, they caught them. Did you he see that him. on CNN, Fox News? Him. Did anybody report that? Did Nancy Gray say yes? Prosecutor I... was caught coaching the witness, uh, giving him notes of his own statements. No, you didn't hear that. The other thing, I reported it. You reported the it. Justicesystem.net, www.thejusticesystem.net, I reported it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we can get this up, but let's give a plug to thejusticesystem.net. Go check these people out. They got streaming video where you can get a report of what's going on. This is one of the real networks you're seeing down here in the red. Check them out. Notice you have to type in the, T-H-E, justicesystem.net. Check them out, people. It's one of the little media people who are getting the <laughs> truth out, which makes Mr. Snedden feel uncomfortable. Well, you know, it because may Because you know seem... what? The other thing he doesn't like is when we mention the words Charles S. Bailey, a former assistant district attorney who, according to the March 1st or 2nd edition of the Santa Maria Times, was caught with, can I say it? Pornography. 
on his district attorney work computer. Hello. That's a violation of a very specific state law. You cannot be enjoying pornography. Any of you other district attorneys, this is a warning. Don't be enjoying pornography downloaded from the internet or any other source on yeah. your work computer on the taxpayer's dollars. But they just fired him quietly. And he was allowed to sneak off across over to the mall, across the courthouse, and set up his private law office. And I asked Mr. Snedden before, and I asked him again, why are you not prosecuting Charles S. Bailey for a very specific violation of state law? Now, I asked former Sheriff Jim Thomas the day you and I were in the press overflow room. Mm -hmm. By the way, I finally, he finally gave me press credentials, people. I've been doing this <laughs> television show for five years. And they just now gave me a press credential. Be so careful, they'll take them back. They might take them back. Say, well, you don't like what you're saying, Mr. Wagner. You're, you're not truly with part of the good old boy press. Anyway, we're in the overflow. And I turn to Jim Thomas. Now, those of you not from Santa Barbara won't know, Jim Thomas is our former county sheriff. And I kind of like the guy. And I asked him, Jim, why wasn't Charles Bealey prosecuted? Hello? Jim said, well, you know, if we prosecuted everybody for every, everybody works for the county or sends an email off their county computer, well, there'd be nobody left working for the county. Well, that's kind of an indictment of everybody who works for the county, number one. But number two, I said, but Jim, this wasn't just an innocent email to mom or dad or their wife or husband. This was pornography. And Jim Thomas, our former sheriff, who now is working for NBC as a highly paid consultant, he snapped back, I know what it was. And that was sort of the end of that conversation. I still think, even though the statute of limitation may be quickly running out, before Snedden goes and prosecutes and digs up all his pornography magazines, which, by the way, that word pornography, which I stressed Charles Bealey had and he admitted to having, they, Snedden has used that word illegally in the courtroom. Pornography is a conclusion of fact. And there was a prior Judge Melville ruling in chambers that neither defense or prosecution were to, to address the magazines as pornography. It was supposed to be called adult material, which doesn't have quite the connotation. Pornography has a conclusion effect. And guess who broke that rule first? Anybody guess? Prosecutor or the defense? Prosecutor. Prosecutor. <laughs> I counted within five minutes. In less than five minutes, Snedden said, well, what did you think about the pornography or something pornography? Well, you know, what they've and, actually done... And Melville didn't punish him for it. They've, they've actually, like, taken adult magazines and separated pages, and I think they're just, I don't know, maybe it's just what they like to do. You said it's on their computer. It's on their computer. Maybe they just want to look at I think we need stuff. to fire I mean, everybody it's like repetition. who works for the DA's It's repetition, office. and... It's, it's right. irrelevant. They're, they're trying to prejudice it's the jury. It's irrelevant material. They can't really prove all that stink stuff came from Michael Jackson's uh, bedroom, number one. Number two, I looked at the fingerprints, and they spent three days on fingerprints. Don't I could only recognize <laughs> one right thumbprint from Michael Jackson was on one of those girly magazines. Okay? So he may have found the magazine where he didn't want it for the kids to see. He picked it up. Thumb through it a little bit and throw it into a corner somewhere where his staff, you know, he's got a lot of male bodyguards and staff, they might have been enjoying it, and he maybe <laughs> didn't want the kids to see it at the arcade, so he threw it someplace down in the wine cellar or someplace where they grabbed it. Then there was question chain of custody. Remember the detective who checked out some of the uh, evidence and didn't return it that day? Yeah. Didn't he say someone else returned it for him the next day? At one point, a detective did say that. I, I think it was We've Paul Zillis. And wasn't that a breach of chain of custody rules? Well, there's been This so is many not flaws. getting reported on Fox so News and CNN. There's been so many flaws. So many flaws. I mean, there's like three or four things you could have a mistrial over. And I'm sure if, <laughs> if Michael Jackson's convicted of anything, it'll be convicted of being too kind to a family that is highly dysfunctional. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody disagree with that? No, no, no. 